Okay, so we're going to look at some questions on free falling. So we've got a brick drop from the top of a very tall building is being constructed and it has the motion as we can see from the graph. So we can see that it has positive acceleration up right up until just after 15 seconds and then it has a very sudden deceleration back to a speed of zero, uh, presumably from it hitting the ground. So state a range of times that the acceleration of the block is zero. Uh, so this is right at the end of the increasing where the graph becomes horizontal. So I'd say the gradient is zero between about 13.8 and 14.9 seconds. It's where it's horizontal right at the end of the speed increase. Uh, state a range of times where the acceleration is constant but not zero. I think there's actually two uh, places here. Uh, I think for the first three seconds approximately we've got a straight line graph there so I would say uh, our acceleration is constant and I'd also say between 14.9 and 15.1 that's pretty much a straight line so we've got constant deceleration at that stage. So explain the shape of the graph. Well What's actually happening is that as the speed of the brick increases, it's colliding with more air particles every second, and it's actually having harder collisions as well because there's a bigger speed difference. And that's going to mean we've got a bigger air resistance. So uh, if we think about the situation, we've got the weight force downwards, air resistance upwards, and if air resistance gets bigger, that's going to make the resultant force smaller, and the smaller resultant force gives you smaller acceleration. Okay, so then that's the section where uh, the acceleration is positive but decreasing to zero. And then I think the second part of the graph, we've got the brick hitting the ground because uh, the normal force from the ground causes the resultant force now to be upwards. So that's in the opposite direction to velocity. So it slows down until the velocity hits zero and it's just going to sit on the ground. So this clearly hasn't bounced off of the ground. It's just whacked in and stuck there. State the direction of the resultant force at 15 seconds. Well, I kind of just answered that one. It's going to be upwards because the velocity is downwards at this point. So it must be in the opposite direction. It must be upwards to make it decelerate. Calculate the initial acceleration. Well, it's a straight line graph, so that's fairly easy. So I'm just going to use a gradient triangle to do this. We've got a uh, it finishing at 30 meters per second starting at zero so we've got a change in a uh, speed of 30 that happens in three seconds giving us a acceleration of 10 meters per second squared so pretty much the acceleration due to gravity during that section because air resistance is quite small at low speeds Calculate acceleration at 6. Uh, this is a little bit more tricky because the graph isn't a straight line at this point. Uh, so what we need to do is draw a tangent to the graph. So I reckon the tangent's about this line here. And then we need to figure out the gradient of the tangent we've drawn by doing change in speed divided by time for that speed change. So there'll be a range of answers here because not everyone will draw exactly the same tangent. But I reckon it's something around about 4.4. So if a piece of paper were dropped at the same height, describe and explain how the graph would be different. Uh, so first of all, uh, it's going to have a much bigger air resistance because it's got a much bigger surface area. So at any given speed, the resultant force downwards is going to be smaller uh, because of that. And that's going to mean you have a smaller acceleration, so we're going to have a smaller gradient at all points on this graph. And then another thing I think to pick up is it's going to have a terminal velocity at a lower speed, because it, it's got a big, much bigger surface area and it's got a smaller weight force. So we, it only needs to be travelling at quite low speed for the weight force and the air resistance to cancel each other out and for it to travel at constant speed from then on. So it'll have a smaller terminal velocity and it will actually probably reach that terminal velocity in a shorter period of time as well. Okay, so that completes this video looking at freefall.